Good morning. Everybody awake? Good morning. Yeah, welcome. Um, we have a session today about 45 minutes. And there's lots to discuss, of course. Um, I won't do the whole PowerPoint because I typically hate PowerPoint. Uh, so if you like some of the slides, please come over to our booth and you get the slides uh, afterwards. Welcome. Um, we're going to talk about supply chain, of course, because this whole conference is about supply chain. Um, we're go going to talk about SAP, because that, that's our solution works only on SAP. Who of you are using SAP? Yeah, great. Are you using SAP yourself? What are typical transactions that you do in your daily life? No transactions? But you use it. The company uses it. The company uses it, but you don't use it yourself. Did, 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 did somebody ever use SAP yourself? What do you transactions do you use? Well, order, sales order. Okay. 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 Who, who loves SAP? <laughs> I do. I do, mother. Okay. Um, we're going to talk about supply chain in SAP. And then the key question is, how do you get the information out of your SAP system that helps you to improve? That's the, that's the topic of today. And um, I'm part of a supplier inside software, and we have a solution. So basically, we're here to sell. Uh, by the way, my colleagues are the sales reps. So uh, if you come or visit the booth, by the way, you can win a great... Standing up. <laughs> uh, that's my colleague, Beth. Um, if you come to our booth, you can win a, a nice prize. Uh, and you can discuss perhaps a nice discount for a license, but that's another topic. Um, I have a PowerPoint. I will briefly go through it. Um, first of all, who am I? I'm Richard. I'm born in 1975. I turned 49 last Sunday. Um, I've been only in this ecosystem of supply chain SAP since 1997, when I was one of the co-founders of a company that was called Everyangle in the past, and that is acquired by a US company inside software. So in the past, we were a Dutch small company with about 150 people, and then we were acquired by inside software that has now like 3,000 people. That has pros and cons. I'm not sure if you ever were part of an acquisition and you were acquired by a bigger company. Some things improve and some things don't improve, <laughs> but that, that, that's what can you do. Um, we have a great solution, we have great customers. Our customers love our product. I will tell you why. But it's very important that you understand, of course, what does this product do, what is the value, and how to use it. Um, I am doing all kinds of things. I am doing development, I'm doing consulting, I'm doing pre-sales. So my colleague Bert yesterday says, oh, you don't fit in the, in, in the organization. No, I don't fit, but I do one thing and it's trying to help customers in some shape and form with our solution. Um, and that, that, that's what I love. So I was yesterday, no, the day before, with a company that just went live with S4HANA. And they have lots of challenges, as we call it. And I try to help them at least from a visibility, from an analytics perspective, by our solution, and they love it. Um, what is the problem that we solve? Lots of companies have reports. Of course, you need reporting. And they have beautiful reporting tools. Uh, however, what I see at companies, most of the reporting they have is either financially, which is good for, for, the, for, the, uh, for the board, how much revenue do we make, how much cost, how much profit, blah, blah, blah. Um, uh, and it's typically historical. Uh, last month, last quarter, last year, which makes sense for financial reporting or whatever. There's only one thing about the, pro the past you cannot change it anymore. It was the past. Like the weather report from last day and last week, you cannot change it. So reactive, typically the most of the management is reactive. Of course, you can try to learn from the past what happened, but you cannot take any action anymore. You only can take action about what is happening today, tomorrow, next week. So look forward. And then you need a total different kind of reporting. You don't want historical sales. You want your bottlenecks in your supply chain. You, want, you don't want to have working capital overviews. You need over -alloc uh, unallocated purchase orders that you buy too much, where you still can make a decision. And that's exactly the solution that we're presenting today. I also hope that I have some time for a demonstration to show you how you can not only do historical analysis, like everybody knows, 
service level, spend analysis, blah, blah, blah. But also how can you transform your information, but not only your information, but also the thinking of people and how to be proactive, how to improve the situation for tomorrow. Um, and one of the topics is data quality. Um, who of you has perfect master data in SAP? Nobody. <laughs> and everybody has, has some people I start see, see smiling. Uh, uh, they say, yeah, master data is the key. If your master data isn't correct, your process will suffer. And then you can do th two things, just accept it or, or fix, the, fix, fix it in the process, correct it and do manual adjustments, adjustments. Or you have to change your master data so it doesn't happen over and over again. So that's another use case of our solution, help companies to improve their data quality in order to optimize the processes. Last but not least, um, who of you run MRP to calculate how much you should buy and make? Yeah, MRP, more peer companies use it. You have to do some kind of planning. Yeah. Um, what is the impact of an old open purchase order that is still open in your system from 2019 for MRP? What happens? What does MRP thinks? If you have an open PO four years ago, it's still coming. It's still coming. So MRP is just an algorithm. It says, oh, you have an open, uh, open PO. You don't have to order. There's no signal to order anything. <laughs> so what we see at customers when we install a solution, they don't have 10 open POs in the past or last year. They don't have thousands. Sometimes they have hundreds of thousands of documents that are still open somewhere in their system, partially or fully, that mess up the planning. And what do you see people do? They don't trust the system, so they start working in Excel. They did instead of fixing the root cause. Make sure you have a clean system. Now, basically, that's my whole story. Um, so I will go through the PowerPoint and do a demo, but you have to. Are there any questions already? No? Is it interesting? Because if it's, this was not interesting, the rest will be just. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have to watch the clock. I have 37 minutes to go. Um, supply chain. Um, supply chain looks simple from the top. You just have to make, buy, and sell the right amount of materials for the right amount of uh, price at a minimum of cost. And you have to make choices. Choices like what products do we sell? Where do we make them? Where do we uh, hold inventory? Do we have one central warehouses or turn decentral? Do we make on stock? Do we buy uh, at customer uh, order? Do we put in safety stock? So there are millions of decisions that you as companies make every day trying to balance your supply chain strategy. What do you want with how you execute it in operations? And that, that's quite complex. That's why I believe artificial intelligence is great, but you still need common sense human thinking and making conscious decisions about what do we want, how do we implement it. Um, what I typically see at companies, if I look at their SAP data, sometimes I don't understand it. Why did you set it up this way? And then the answer is, yeah, but that uh, was the way it was implemented by our partner 20 years ago. Okay, so you are still doing what the partner did 20 years ago without re-evaluation or, yeah, this is how we do it. Okay, but who's responsible for redesigning the process or thinking, is it still after 20 years the best way of doing it? Yeah, we do that when we do go to Esrahana. And that's what's happening right now at the moment. A lot of companies have to move from their ECC to Esrahana. And don't take that as a technical system approach, but do that as a kind of redesign of their processes. So they start basically doing a whole new ERP implementation, rethinking the way of working, document types, planning concepts, etc., which is good, but it's risky because everything that is working good is not automatically working the same in Esfrahana. So sometimes you fix a problem, but you introduce new, three new ones at the same time. I see happening. So be careful if you migrate to Esfrahana. Don't consider it purely as a technical upgrade. Consider it as both an opportunity and a threat to improve your processes. It's a business pro, pro, so be involved. Don't let your IT make all the decisions. Be there leading 
This is the way we want to operate our supply chain. This is the way we want to model it in SAP. These are the settings parameters we want to do. Test it and do it. Um, of course, you have to make choices. How much inventory do we keep? And of course, there's always a pooling. Some people say we need more inventory so we're never out of stock. And other people say, yeah, but then you have too much working capital and it costs too much. And it's always a balancing act, of course. Everybody knows. But the key question, of course, is how do you measure it? How do you analyze it? How do you improve it? Um, companies have supply chain challenges. Uh, in the past, we had COVID, we had uh, component shortages, we have traffic issues, we have container uh, shortages in the world, we have uh, the Suez Canal, that is uh, the Red Sea, where they are attacking. Con There's lots of challenges. What I also see as a challenge is the increased dynamics in, su in supply chain. The pace of introducing new products, the pace of phasing out old products, the, the complexity in your supply chain is not just buy, sell, deliver. There's a whole assortment, combination, drop shipments, uh, uh, configuration items, make to order processes, trying to fulfill a complete set of, of products for a whole customer base. It's, it's not easy with all the them. If, if, if you have only 100 products in your supply chain with a stable demand, that the supply chain is easy. You can calculate the optimal safety stock and the optimal reorder point. And if you have reliable suppliers, it's not easy. But companies don't have 100 products. They have hundreds of thousands of products. Companies don't have a stable assortment. They phase in and phase out faster and faster. Um, also, the globalization, uh, the dependency on long lead times. So you can be flexible, but if your supplier takes eight weeks to put it on a boat, then yeah, you can be flexible, but <laughs> your supply is not. So it's a challenge. Um, so every company has different challenges. However, in the end is, how does it impact your operations? How, what information do you need to manage that complexity? What alerts do you get out of your system that proactively inform you about the risk? Or are you reactive and only wait until the customer complains and says, where is my product? Or can you transform it into a more proactive approach? What I see at companies is basically reporting split in beautiful dashboards, typically aggregated figures, the total revenue, total sales, beautiful, where I think, yeah, it's beautiful, but what do you expect the action is now? If the revenue declines, you cannot do something directly, it's, it's reactive. And I see Excel chaos in operations, people in daily operations, pulling in data, combining it, doing VLOOKUPs, um, and sometimes IT doesn't even know or doesn't want to know because they say, well, we have a BI strategy. And then I say, go to the planning team, look at what's, what's on their screens. It's the mail, it's SAP, and the Excel spreadsheets. So your ideal architectural BI landscape is not what the actual operation is doing. What's the problem on the right? On the right. The problem on the right is it takes a lot of time. Many people are doing the same. You have to have the right knowledge to do it because it's not that easy. And sometimes that knowledge is only in two key users' mind. And when they leave or are sick, nobody knows how it works. It's not scalable. It's not really one version of the truth. So the, qu the question is, can you replace that right operational reality with a plug and play solution for SAP? And that's exactly, yes, that's our solution. So with our solution, you basically replace all your manual time and risky effort to combine data into a meaningful operational analytics with a standard solution. Where SAP is the single so source of the truth? That's the first question I always ask to a, to a potential customer. Do you see your SAP system as the single version of the truth? If the answer is no, because we have lots of other data that's not in SAP that is very relevant, then I say, okay, then you have a challenge, but we're not going to solve that one. We have only support companies that say, the single version of the truth should be in SAP. If it's late in SAP, it's late. If this is the inventory in SAP, that's the inventory. Of course, it can be that not all of the data is maintained in SAP manually. It can also be interfaced. So a lot of data in SAP is not entered in SAP. That's the result of an external forecasting system interfaced to SAP, of an external supplier portal that releases purchase orders into SAP. But as long as the data resides in SAP. We only connect to one SAP 
instance at a time. Who of you works for a company that, that has multiple SAP systems for divisions, regions? Yeah. So we also have a lot of customers doing that, um, and we only install our solution at one instance, at one client at a time, because one instance is one data set. We don't combine, so we don't combine data from multiple SAP systems. Um, from reactive to proactive. Now, what management always wants to know is t terms like on time and full, the confirmed line item performance or the requested line item, whatever terminology for service level. They want to have uh, lost sales. On the balancing count of the su supply chain, they want to see working capital and that kind of stuff, to turnover ratios. That's nice. But that's not actionable. To make it actionable, you have to dive into operations. And then you talk about data quality, which of my sales orders still are open and blocked. Why? Which of my uh, sales orders are waiting for the purchase requisition to be converted into a PO? Why? Which of my sales orders are not planned at all because the product is blocked? I see that happening a lot. You put in a master data, you start selling, somebody blocks a product and sales orders stay open forever. So you have to do all kinds of operational action lists to help customer service and planning teams find the bottlenecks, find the uh, exceptions, the late orders, and improve them. On the working capital, the same. Of course, you can look at total working capital, 100 million, 300 million, whatever, but you have to find the top 10 of most value-weighted materials where you have to adjust safety stocks or adjust the minimum lot size or centralize the inventory instead of putting safety stock in five warehouses, centralize it in one warehouse. That's on an SKU level. So you have to go to operation level. You don't have to look to historical consumption, you want to look to future demand. And then look, what of my products are not needed? So if you phase in a new product and replace it with an old product, suddenly purchase orders that were needed to fulfill component requirements for the old product are not needed anymore. Then at directly you want to inform your supplier and say, sorry, we placed an order for the product, but we phased to a new packaging variant. Can we cancel it and replace it with a new one? preventing that he still delivers the old PO and you don't use it anymore. So that's from reactive to... So simplified view, historical KPIs in my perspective are reactive, operational action lists are proactive. Um, SAP, I love SAP because it's one of the few systems that really helps companies in one backbone doing a standard way of working and supported that in a German way. And German means do it right, otherwise it doesn't work. You cannot fool around in SAP easily. You have to fill it step by step. And if you do it correctly, it will work. If you don't do it correctly, the process stops. So it's really German, it's really integrated. So if you do a change of the uh, purchase or the goods received, directly your balance sheet is impacted. If you send a billing document, your HR, your accounts receivable is increasing. So it's really, the back end is working. But it requires a high discipline. It requires a high data quality. It requires a high uh, uh, efficiency in your organization. Also, when I speak to companies, then people typically after 20 years in operations do a trick in SAP. They don't know what's happening, they just, uh, so where are your key users? Yeah, our key users, they left or they were promoted to manager or they got it. So typically make sure your SAP process knowledge, they don't have to be SAP techies, but at least they should know the SAP process, the way of thinking of SAP. So they know what the impact is of certain areas and they fix it the right way. So I was doing training this week at a customer about this, this analytics and reporting, but I started by explaining the SAP process. How does SAP work for setting up a material master, running MRP, creating a requisition, converting to a PO, doing inbound delivery, doing a PO confirmation. A good, a PO. Oh, this is how it works. And because everybody has a small vis, uh, silo approach, nobody has the end-to-end -end process. So make sure, recommendation, that your SAP knowledge in the organization is up to the level that you want it to be. Invest in people that they don't do the trick in SAP, they really understand what they're doing and what the system is doing for them. 
And if they don't understand, people will not benefit from all kinds of features. I know that, for example, uh, customers are, uh, I have seen customers that default put a delivery block on all sales orders. So they create a sales order, directly put it on a delivery block. As why? Yeah, because we want to have influence on the sequence on which sales order is delivered when. Yeah, but you have an ATP rule, and then you configure your ATP rule, and the ATP rule will calculate the availability, and based on the availability, you will deliver. Yeah, but we don't trust our ATP. So you have a beautiful Ferrari, but you only put it in the first gear and slow it with ten, uh, drive it 10 miles per hour, because you don't trust the horsepower in the system or you don't trust the organization, or you don't trust the data. So SAP is a great system, but it requires a certain maturity of, of process knowledge, data quality, et cetera. SAP is a great system. However, it's not easy to get information out. You know the transaction MM01? That is, what is MM01 doing? Create a material. MM02? Change one material. MMO3, display one material. Where's the transaction that shows you all the materials uh, with the check if the master date is correct? There's no, there's no. So that's, that's, that's the whole SAP. The SAP system is transactional. It's, all, it's from single document, single material point of view. There's no overview. There's no standard way of looking at total. So if, you, if, if a planner says, yes, I want to see the, in, the inventory, they either can do it for an individual product, they go to MMB or whatever, see the, all the product details, but if they want to see a total overview of block stock, there is no transaction of total block stock. So what happens, Custom, customers build custom transactions, Z transactions, who has Z transactions in SB? Loads. Why? Because it was not in the system, but you need it. And that's exactly where we come in. We help companies prevent that Z transactions. By the way, if you move, migrate to S for HANA, they typically delete all the Z programs because they want to start clean again. Get back to a clean core, as, as it's called in the, the SAP consulting terminology. That means you lose everything you have because there was a reason that you needed it. That's a, that's a risk. With Angles, our solution, you can build any report on the fly in a couple of clicks. And that's, that's beautiful. Um, the SAP database is huge complex. If you do the number of tables in SAP, so not the number of records, but the number of tables, it's over 100,000. It's one, pff, it's immense. And everybody uses Google and they start Googling the tables and trying to, to merge. And we have a solution where we know exactly where all the relevant tables are, with all the logic in those tables, with the relationships, with the meaning of the fields, into valuable information out of the box. We spent 25 years doing that. And it's a nightmare. Because even the data that's not in the database is not always what it says. For example, not a lot of people know that. If you have a purchase order and you put in a price, five pounds per piece, then you think in the database it's stored like five pounds per piece, which is true. But if you do it in Japanese yen, you put in 500 Japanese yen, in the database it's not 500. There's a decimal correction in the database happening that stores in a different decimal places than what you expect. So if you just upload the raw data, then it is correct for British pound, but it's incorrect for Jap Japanese yen because it, there's a decimal correction. We know that because we have built that conversion logic in our software that we know which, which currencies need to be corrected. There are millions of examples of doing this. If you go to a transaction like MMO3, display one material, then you think that that's one table in SAP. Mara, that's not true. On the header, you can see the material type description that comes from a co configuration table. In the header, you can see the material description that comes from MAKT. If you go to the tab classification, you go into the classification tables. So even a simple transaction like MMO3, display one material, does a join in a data database of tens of tables. You don't want to do that in Excel. We do that in our solution. Um, I already mentioned data quality. We don't sell our solution as a data quality tool because data quality is not that sexy. However, the moment we install our solution, 
we have a meeting like this with a customer and we show their live data, people say, this is not correct. You say, well, this is in your SAP system. That cannot be. They do some, yeah, that's true. It's still in our SAP system. And they, they start talking to each other. Yeah, but who's responsible for keeping our system clean? IT. Well, IT says, no, it's not our data. It's business data. You have to do it. Who is the stakeholder doing that? So data is not the objective. Data is the foundation to even be able to do proper planning, analytics, execution. It's the health of your system, not from a technical perspective, but from a planning. What do you think your MRP will do if you have those polluted POs? Nobody trusts it. If you have wrong lead times in your system, you get a PO that says, yeah, I have a PO that can be delivered next week. And then the supplier needs three weeks because your lead time is wrong. The supplier is not late, your lead time is wrong. And all these people blame others. That's, that's human, we always blame the system, IT, the supplier. But I think also as a supply chain, we have a responsibility to maintain our data so it's high quality, reliable to, to do our processes. The solution. We have a solution, angles for SAP. Um, it's plug and play, nobody believes it. It's certified for SAP. We even do supply chain health checks. That means we come in, together with IT, we connect it to your SAP system, we pull the data, and we show all the stuff you want to know and the stuff you don't want to know. Sometimes there's a lot of politics about, oh, this is sensitive. No, it's not sensitive. It makes me look bad. <laughs> no, uh, it's just the data in SAP. These are your open production orders. If you have open production orders from 2023, you didn't close, you see production orders open from 2023 that are not closed. So sometimes, especially in some companies, you feel a little bit, don't show everything because not with my manager, because it's too, yeah, but we just show the fact. You cannot deny this is the fact in SAP. Either you fix it, accept it, or whatever you do, this is the fact. So we show it, the supply chain health check. So we come in, install it, show it with your data, and then you have, we have all the stakeholders, and then basically there can be two conclusions. One, it's a perfect world, nothing is to improve, and management says, thank you for confirming we're doing a perfect job, and we don't have a license. So we just did a small project, confirming everybody's happy, nothing to improve. Luckily for us, we always found huge amounts of potential improvements. But then the question is, does the organization seize the need to do something about it. If your inventory is sky high because you want to have a 99% service level and nobody cares, yeah, we, we show a huge amount of potential stock reduction, nobody cares. That happens. So if we do a health check, we always ask what are, where's the, 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 the pain currently in the business? What is the, the focus area of your management? And how can we make sure that we show the elements that contribute to that area of interest. And always, sometimes we start high level, and then we say, oh, this is interesting. Oh, this plant just went live in Poland. Yeah, they're not doing a great. We have to do a kind of recovery process for our go live in Italy, or we have to do a data quality project for whatever division. So you see huge. Uh, um, after we did our supply chain health check, customers can buy a license. And then we just keep the software running. We train people to use it and they start using it. And uh, there's one warning, <coughs> it's addictive. So once people are used to having the capability building their own reports, they never want to give it away anymore. They don't want to be dependent on IT because then they have to wait for weeks or months to have the report. So that's a warning. Once you people give it, uh, if you give it to the people, they see the power and say, oh, finally I can answer my boss's question in, 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 in an hour instead of building a report and that takes a week or whatever. Um, and then you start using it and then uh, you don't need us that much. Sometimes we do a software upgrade or we come by for training, <coughs> but that's a relatively uh, low implementation. But it's dependent on the adoption by your colleagues and by yourself. It is a tool and I always compare it with the fitness equipment. If I if you wake up, uh, wake up uh, late at night and you cannot sleep and you turn on the television and you see these tell cell commercials of people buying their fitness equipment, I become in shape, I had too much weight and now I'm in shape. That's not because they bought the equipment, 
that's because they bought the equipment and start using it. And that's the same with our software. Our software does not change anything. It only shows the pain, potential improvements. It's up to the usage, the decisions, the actions that people take to get the value out. That's a little bit tricky for our marketing team because they want to say, yeah, what is the value of our solution? And my answer is, that's, that's dependent on, on how companies use it. If they use it good, they have huge amount of benefits. If they install it and they don't use it, like a fitness equipment, you put it in the garage or whatever, and you never use it, don't expect any benefit. So that's a warning. Perhaps my salespeople don't like that me to sell you that, because I say this, the tool is magic. Yes, the tool is magic if you use it properly, like any tool. So that's a responsibility uh, I want to give to you. If you want to buy it, please do. But if you don't going to use it, don't do it, because there will be no benefit. Our sales get a bonus, but that's it. It's an open door, but I think it's important to mention. What's important for IT? Yes, IT needs to be involved because they uh, help need to need to connection to their RCP system, which is the SAP basis team. Sometimes those are colleagues in the same building. Then it works very fast. Sometimes <coughs> you have colleagues in the same uh, country. Then you have to call them. If you have your SAP basis team in a different region, we see slow communication and alignment and politics, but it's just what it needs. What is good for IT is they like our solution because it helps the business to get more value out of SAP. We're not competing to their SAP system. We're helping the business to get a better understanding and uses of it. So we leverage basically that Ferrari to get from the first gear to the second, to the third, to the fourth by getting the visibility, helping people to, to understand their data quality, etc. So we are the biggest SAP promoters because our analytics is fully dependent on the quality of the data. Third, IT does not have to build all those Z transactions anymore. And some IT people like that. They say, all those stupid operational Z transactions, we don't have to build. They love our solution as an IT. And some IT people don't like that. Why? Redundancy. That is their job. They, they, they understand the SAP data structure. They are experts in SAP tables. And suddenly, the business can do it themselves. So there, you, sometimes you see kind of differences. Um, what is the power of angles? We simplify. SAP, it's very complex. You have thousands of tables. You have document types, material types. You have processes, purchase orders, schedule agreements, inquiries, quotes. Main to, uh, we simplified. And for example, this screen shows that all documents are either open or closed are late, critical, or not critical. How simple can you make it? And we take care of the complexity behind. We look in your SAP system what processes are configured, what document types are used, how the document type is set up, what the process is behind, to calculate if it's open or closed. So users love this. They say, finally, I get my open PREC analysis by just selecting open PRECs. And I don't have to care about deletion flex in the back end and delivery completions or whatever. So we make it simple. Time for a demo. Um, I can do historical service levels, sales, back orders, open requisitions, stock shortages. What do you want me to show? Stock Sorry? Stock shortages. stock shortages for sales or for production? Stock shortages for production. OK, that's a good one. Um, so that means you have component requirements for production. And you want to see which of them I cannot fulfill out of inventory. So I, I'm dependent on a supplier to deliver or uh, whatever. Do you want to only to see the production shortages for current production orders or also for future plant orders? Both. So the combination of all the stock shortages for both production orders and plant orders. How much time do you need? do you think I need? To build that report. No, because <laughs> how? I have 10 minutes. No. Well, let me do it. Uh, I, you, it's not training, so I will be to the point. But uh, by the way, we, we discussed this in advance. They were all, they were all pre, pre scripted. Um, 
I buy, a, I make a new angle because I have to do one. Uh, I go to the business process, supply to demand, because there I see all my production data, uh, production orders, plant orders, uh, etc. And my components are here at the reservations. So my reservations are basically my component requirements for production and plant orders. So if I want to do the shortages on component level, I select this one. And then I get a list of millions of components, of all my component requirements. Open ones, closed ones, all of them. So this is a huge list, millions of component requirements. Because if you run MRP with a horizon of 12 months, it explodes. Um, I want to see my shortages. So first of all, if the component requirement is already closed, it's not a component requirement anymore. So I only want to look at my open component requirements because the closed ones cannot be a shortage because those are closed. So I go to my open requirements. And then I want to know, is there a stock shortage? And you can see that there is a field. By the way, you can directly see pollution. So these are component requirements in the past that you just should have cleaned up already. So MRP still thinks you have a component requirement. Replenish, keep inventory. No, clean the reservations and you have a clean requirement. But now let's go for the shortages, only the ones that are MRP relevant, because I don't want to see the phantoms and all the complexity. Where is my stock shortage? Order type delivering order. I make a pivot and I see that some of my component requirements I can deliver from stock. So this, the ones on stock are not a shortage. So these 2,239 are on stock. By the way, this is a demo system. So it has, doesn't have the millions, but thousands of records, but it works the same with millions. So these are not on stock. And for example, these 3,000 are waiting for the requisition. So that means I have to buy to fulfill the requirement. So I want to have my shortages that are dependent on purchasing. I drag in now my order number delivering order. That is basically the number of the requisition. So I see the requisition number here. I want to see the purchasing group, which team is responsible for buying it. And I sort them on due date. So the orders on top. And I have not my component shortages. I even can see which purchasing group is responsible for buying it, what requisition needs to be converted, so how concrete can you get, and who, is, who should do it. And there we are. We have now the list of component shortages. There are components that are open, relevant for planning, where they are dependent on the requisition, so there's no stock, with the number of the requisition and the purchasing group and the name of the purchasing group next to it. Sorted on the components that I need first. I save this one, run it every day. Perhaps my purchasing team likes it, that they now get this we need to buy now because I, I'm out of stock. And this is a very dynamic list. The moment you change a component in the bill of material, you run MRP. The next day you have new shortages. So this is changes. This is the, yeah. Does it make sense? Another report. Service levels, back orders, purchasing, sales, whatever. Sorry? Out if by customer. Out if by customer. Yes, thanks. Do you want to measure it on confirmed date or requested date? Requested. So this is a discussion. You see, I first have to discuss what you want before I jump to my laptop. This is something my colleague always points. Don't go with your laptop. First discuss what people want. In sales, you have a process. You create a sales order with a requested date. Then the ATP runs. That confirms it. Then you deliver it. And you want to measure what did we deliver and what did the customer request. We call it service level. I have six minutes. Create angle. I now go to order to cash. You see here the, the custom order to cash process with master data, material master, customer master. And you see the sales document in three levels, the header, the item, and the schedule line. And my uh, opinion is you can only measure it on schedule line level because there you can see the link in the document flow with the delivery with the requested date from the line. So I choose the schedule line, then I have basically all my sales orders, 
and I can filter on document type, on period, on whatever I want to filter on, but I have all my sales orders. Here you can see that same open closed. Do you want to measure the service level for the open ones or for the closed ones? The closed ones. So we drill down to the closed sales orders. And then uh, there is a field that was not in my report yet. That's called service level. And that is basically the calculation between requested date. You can look to the help text and then... Uh, where's my mouse? Sorry, my mouse. Server level. There it is. Then I want to have a pivot. So count how many sales orders have a certain service level. And do that by customer. So from the customer master, let's do it by sold to. Where's my customer? There it is. Put this one here and there. So it's just a count. And I also could do percentages. I can do graphs, but just as a basic. And I can see per customer how many sales orders were shipped. How many were delivered on time? How many were delivered late? And if I drill down to the 116 that are delivered late to this uh, customer Lampenmarkt, I get the 116 sales orders that were delivered. I can do it by product. By, okay. Three minutes to go. Do you believe how, how powerful this is if you do this with your live data? Because people say, yeah, but you have to exclude, exclude the special orders and these customers are not relevant and do it only for the intercompany. You can filter whatever you want. I want to wrap it up because I only have uh, three minutes. Um, if you like the PowerPoint, please come to our stand and, uh, or give me your business card. This is what we do, supply chain matching, so linking supply to demand, otherwise we cannot measure the component shortages, so linking requisitions to component requirements. Basically, it's fully MDO4 concept based. So people that like MDO4, they love our solution because MDO4 shows the data, but there's no relation. Uh, I did a live demo. There are some screenshots in the PowerPoint if you want your colleagues to, to see it. This was, by the way, uh, my service level uh, example that you asked. Also, we discussed it in advance. Uh, yeah. Uh, technically pic picture, our source is SAP, ECC, or s -Fahana. We extract it, we do the data modeling, the, the logic, the calculations, you have a user interface, and you can publish it also, if you like, in any visualization tool you want for a nice dashboarding. How to get the value? Oh, this is a summary. Yeah, how to get the value? Get a picture of what's happening right now, make people aware, train them in what they should do, give them the information, and, and positively stimulate them. So it's not a punishing tool, it's a let's do it in a better than we did it in the past tool. So sometimes it's a kind of negative, this is wrong, and this is, so sometimes people don't like angles because it puts the focus on things that don't go well. Yeah, but there's the opportunity to improve. Last but not least, we uh, have the health check. Um, the health check is just the current state. We install, show it with your data, and then you can uh, define all the use cases. So what we did right now, two use cases on the fly, we're doing these health checks like meetings with uh, spending two hours on these use cases. And people say, why do you provide more visibility in one hour? Then we were asking our, 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 our T team for two years to build reports because we spent 25 years on building this, this tool Customer after customer, all standardized. Um, but it starts with clean data. Also, when you migrate to s hana make sure you have go live with clean data. Contact information, you can find me on LinkedIn. Just send me an invitation, I will accept it. And then we have uh, 40 seconds for questions. <laughs> in, in the, in the, by the way, we, we have a booth, so any question you have, you can have. Short feedback. What was the? Was it boring? You didn't fall asleep. <laughs> Any question? Yeah, 
said, uh, you are invited to visit our booth. We have a lottery uh, this afternoon for uh, people who visit us. Uh, a nice uh, Lego gadget. Uh, gadget? <laughs> <laughs> Beep, beep. <laughs> so, right at that. Thanks for your time. Have a great day.